Hello everybody, Sanyo, engineer, MBA, and investor. In today's video, I want to talk about the FDA statement stance on genome editing compared to alternatives. So, of course, this came about after yesterday's video. I made a part two of the whole Verve Therapeutics drama. Again, if you missed those videos, highly recommend you guys to watch it because it is a... a a boiling topic right now, a boiling subject rather, in the CRISPR space. Uh, and of course, when I made that video, Biotech 2K1 came back telling me the following. One thing you miss is the FDA guidance at this time says that when there are other effective therapies are available, that editing is only a last resort. I also question the assumption durability will last decades. So if we ignore just the last sentence, just the first sentence here, right? That other effective therapies are available that editing is only as a last resort, right? Of course, this is referencing to Verve Therapeutics, what they're trying to do with Verve 101. Of course, the alternatives right now are statins and we saw the efficiency for those. Again, are they optimal? No, are they, you know, more, do we, would we want more than, 60, 70, 80% from statins, of course we do. Uh, but of course, what we got from Verve Therapeutics results for lowering the LDLC levels there are not really that better than statins, right? If, we, if they are better, we're looking at only a few percentage. And based on this statement there, there's something to be said about genome editing at this point, right? The, Ver, the whole program of Verve 101 is at jeopardy, right? Uh, for that exact reason what you're seeing on the screen. And if I give you guys here in a report from uh, the FDA there, and this was highlighted again by Biotech 2K1, uh, Biotech uh, 2K1 gave me this uh, screenshot saying, human GE products, of course, GE being genome editing, GE products may have significant risk and an uncertain potential for benefits. Therefore, First in human trials involving such products generally should be designed to enroll only subjects for whom no other treatment options are available or acceptable. Factors to consider in determining the study. Okay, anyways, uh, forget about the last sentence, but this is very important, guys. Uh, so what we're looking at here is a situation where genome editing should only be done in clinical trials where there are no alternatives in any of these diseases that in these companies are trying to tackle. We have that with CRISPR therapeutics, uh, hexa cells program, CTX001, of course. We have that with NTLA 2001, 2002. We have that, of course, with what Caribou is trying to do with CAR T cells. We have that uh, with uh, BEAM 101, for example, although there's no patients dose. Uh, of course, they're tackling sickle cell disease. Again, no alternatives there. But Verve is doing something really special with Verve 101. And they're trying to tackle heart diseases with, of course, lowering the uh, LDL levels there. But statins already do that. And we already have numbers and metrics for statins. Statins are already available for doctors to prescribe. And doctors have been prescribing statins for years and years, right? I mean, you think about heart diseases and prevention of it. Statins are the first Google research, right? Research. Just search for it, you know, heart disease treatment, you'll see statins right away. Uh, the reason why it's that, because we already have studies, we already have companies selling statins. We took a look at that again in the part one series of the last two videos. Highly recommend you guys to watch it. But now we have a situation here, guys, that we have a company trying to tackle a certain set of disease that we already have alternatives, and the FDA already said that they only want genome editing for specific diseases that you have no alternative. So already there, Verve 101 doesn't stand. But even if it was to stand, because obviously statins and other injections or whatnot, these are done on a daily, weekly, monthly, you know, occurrence basis, right? It's not a one-time treatment, which obviously Verve is trying to solve. But besides that, there are alternatives. And then you factor in this statement from Biotech 2K1 saying that the FDA guidance said that it should only be as a last resort. And when you think about it, Verve 101, whatever they're doing, is not really a last resort. What their promise is, is a one-time treatment. Forget about statins, forget about all these injection drugs, whatnot. One-time treatment, 
we solved the whole LDL problem, right? We solved the whole heart disease problem, we prevent it. And although it is a novel promise, and I think maybe the FDA could make an exception for it, considering heart diseases are the leading cause of that in America, the results came in, well, like we covered and on again on non-humans, it's preclinical. We, we gotta make sure we state that, but still the results came in really just a little bit above what statins are able to do, one of the popular drugs for statins. And at that point, you start questioning the whole fundamental of this program, right? And whether or not the FDA is right at this guidance, whether or not genome editing should be only used as last resort, I mean, that's a whole nother topic. I think uh, you already know my opinion, guys, and I'm not gonna go too much into it in this video, but I do wanna make a statement here that the FDA is really, you know, first of all, it's not elected by the people. Uh, so already there, there's a problem because now you have a bunch of bureaucratics, bunch of bureaucrats rather, that have their position without any competition. Uh, they have a whole monopoly under who, which company goes in, which company stays out in terms of program, and that obviously affects their company revenues, bottom line, top line, and what, what not. Obviously changes the whole course of history when it comes to business uh, in the biotech space. Uh, and then of course you have the fact that, you know, they're not clear at times, you know, you see what Beam Therapeutics went through or is going through right now with Beam 1201. Took them 30 days to get an email from the FDA and then another few months just to get a response back, I'm assuming. so. I'm not sure why, guys. I, I don't. I'm not saying here I'm supportive of the FDA guidance, but that's the reality we live in. That's the landscape we're gonna have to operate in. Uh, I mean, there's a reason why Elon Musk has not entered the whole biotech to his space. You know, he's actually mentioned this, I believe, in a tweet saying that the regulations are way too high for this space. There's a reason why many people stay away from this space. But the people that do go through this space, it is hard, it is tough, but the rewards are extremely high. And at the end of the day, if you put money aside, you're doing something extre extremely noble and noble by curing potential diseases that uh, we've never had the opportunity to do so before CRISPR as a genome editing tool. So very, very interesting, guys. It wasn't really a part three of the last two videos. We're more ta talking about the FDA guidance, but what their statement is about genome editing. I think it's interesting. What do you guys think? Do you guys think the FDA is wrong? Do you think... Do you guys think that we're missing something here? Let me know in the comments below. Curious to see what you guys are thinking. Hopefully you guys are having a beautiful midweek here. Almost a weekend, guys. Do like this video if you found value. Subscribe if you're not. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.